everybody. How is everyone doing tonight? I know I'm running a few minutes late. I have a very bad habit of forgetting to eat um, all day. And then uh, right before I'm about to go live or record something, um, I remember that I haven't eaten all day and the anxiety I have, you know, like the introverted anxiety I have before I extrovert, uh, just, it causes a lot of, a lot of like, uh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot I need to eat. And then like, literally I was just shoving pizza in my mouth, like two seconds before I came on this live stream. And, uh, and I have to remind myself because I will get, you know, I think you have to eat, stay alive. So, um, yeah. And I had a couple technical difficulties, but I'm here. I'm here. I made it. Welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's 2021. And we started it with a coup. We're going to get into it tonight. Let me check some audio. And let me know if you are watching in the chat. This is an open Q&A, but this is also an 18 and up live stream. So please be over 18. We will talk about some kinky things sometimes. Okay, good. I think my audio is working. So here we go. I'm gonna pop out the chat. Someday, 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 I'm going to have a, a producer that can do all of this stuff for me. <laughs> so, hello. It's a coup. Uh, happy New Year. Uh, yeah. So let's 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 get into it. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the MP Talks show every Thursday at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on the MP Experience YouTube channel. Please like, share, subscribe down below if you like this content. We talk about kink, BDSM, rope on shibari, and uh, I give my commentary on uh, current event topics. This week, we are going to cover my review of the Clubhouse app. We're going to cover the coup, the insurrection. We're going to cover, I'm going to do a review of a new bondage website called Shibari Academy. I'll give you guys some resources where some really amazing uh, classes and content are going on. Uh, I'm going to have a rant. Um, if depending on, depending on the vibe goes, depending on, on how the vibe goes, I do have an educational topic I want to talk about tonight, but if we don't get to it, I will do it on another live. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. And then obviously we will, I will give you my weekly ponderings and let you know what's, uh, what's going on for the future of, um, of the channel. Uh, I mean, updates on like what, what kind of videos are getting, you know, updated or uploaded soon. Hello, Aaron Watts. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. I hope you are having a great New Year. Um, you guys are going to get a lovely view here for a second because I just feel like my camera could be in a little bit better position. Mm. Mm. You know, the fro is big and trying to get it all in frame, you know? So, um, hello, LJ Clark. Happy New Year, Posh. I know I keep protein bars in stock. They're real easy to scarf down. Yes, I do the same thing. I do. I have like um, protein bars and like granola bars. I have lots of snacks. That's typically actually how I <laughs> often survive is uh, I snack all day. Um, but when I am in uh, heavy work mode, like if I'm in a serious workflow or like today I had to run errands, <laughs> so I had to leave the house and, um, I, uh, that causes its own anxiety and, uh, just kind of off my game. Um, uh, my partner stayed home from work tonight, which is, you know, so like insurrection yesterday and then today just things were a little off. Um, actually I considered even canceling this live stream, but then I pulled it together, I pulled it together. Okay. Um, because I don't, I haven't really processed how I feel about, uh, <laughs> about what happened yesterday, but I don't want to skip topics. We're going to get to that. Stay tuned. Um, I did, uh, I did take time and made, and made cool little, uh, segments for y'all. So hopefully you enjoyed them. So let's get into this week in the news and start with some pop culture news. Here we go. So for pop 
pop culture news this week, I'm going to talk talk talk. I'm going to talk. <laughs> oh gosh, I have so many meetings. I'm not going to I I can't talk. Uh and I'm I'm not going to. I don't have the proper you know, body parts. Um so tonight we're going to talk about uh the Clubhouse app. So if you haven't heard of what it is, oh Aaron Watts said I love your hair. Thank you so much. Um, and hello, Eric Pup 2020. I see you in the chat. Um, we're going to talk about the Clubhouse app. If you don't know what it is, I'm going to go over real quick what it is. Um, and then also, like, again, give you some information. So it's a, it's not like a new app. I think it came out during, uh, during the pandemic. I don't know if it came out before the pandemic or it, like, was launching right during that time. But it's a social media app, and basically, like, it's, like, social media Zoom rooms, uh, but audio only, so no video. So instead of, like, if you're going through your Instagram feed, right, uh, different pictures from people you follow come up, you know, for Clubhouse, different rooms that people you follow are hosting would come up and then you can go into different rooms and just have conversations with people and i'm going to get into some of the uh, amazing conversations that i've been able to have with people on this app but it's to be honest like i was i, I had to to mourn for a little for a little bit that i had lost my instagram account right i still have i think i have about 10 more days till i can reapply like apply and see if i can get it reinstated but, you know, I had a moment where I'm like, if you don't get, re you know, if it's not going to get reinstated, I might as well already start this morning process. And then um, I reserved my username on Clubhouse and got lucky that literally that day, someone that I knew that was on Clubhouse went ahead and nominated me and I got into it. And the first night I was on, I was on there for like four hours um, and like two, uh, two or three different rooms. But there's tons of different topics going on. There's a lot of kink stuff going on. There's at least a kink conversation going on, you know, two to three times a day. Um, I'm hosting a conversation on Clubhouse every Monday at 9 p.m. about rope bondage and shibari with some of my, uh, some of my friends and uh, business partners that I do stuff with. Um, so we did that last Monday. It was great. We got to introduce, again, get to... Instead of having to like draw in an audience or ask someone to follow you by just a picture, right? Just a snippet in time. I actually get to have one-on-one, -on -one, not one-on-one, -on -one, but I get to have group conversations with people or get to, people get to hear me talk about something instead of me having to write about something, which is not my best medium, to be honest. That's why I'm on YouTube. And, but they can connect with it. They get to like hear the tone um, or the authenticity, uh, off, um, genuineness behind your voice um when you're talking and i've gotten twitter and and um facebook followers from people just like see like having a conversation on there some people i didn't even like talk to weren't even in the actual conversation because you don't have to talk you can just listen in the background but that have reached out to me for rope coaching sessions or just followed me and i feel like it's not gonna replace instagram but i feel like it allows me to connect with people that are getting into the community or new to rope bondage in a much more authentic way uh rather than the dms if you know like on instagram so i love like i mm, i love this app that i've been spending to be honest like i've had a couple of friends tell me that when they downloaded tiktok they like lost six hours of their life right and so one of the reasons why i refused to download uh tiktok it's because I was like, if my friends lost hours of their life um, because they were just, you know, just scrolling through TikTok shit, um, then I am definitely going to be guilty of, of I'm going to have, I'm going to end up doing the same thing. So I just haven't downloaded it despite the, and, and also the fact that there's like all the racist things going on. Um, so this is the logo. Ooh. This is the logo for the app. It's only on Apple devices. It's called Clubhouse. There are fake or different types of um, apps out there called Clubhouse. So that's why I wanted to make sure to show you the logo. 
So if you don't have an Apple device, they are going to be moving to Android, but I don't think they've done it yet. They're still in uh, beta, to be honest. Okay. I didn't mirror my camera, and so, like, if I don't... <laughs> I'm getting confused in, like, which direction to move. Um, so within beta right now, you have to have an Im invitation to, uh, like, create an account on the, uh, on the app, but you can reserve your username and then, um, and then people who are on the app might, can see your username and can nominate you so that you can like um, join the app. So it, it is, it has started out as invitation only. I'm not sure if they're gonna keep it that way or not. I don't have Steven's suspicion in mind just because of the conversations they're trying to facilitate in the app. Uh, give you, again, let's give you a little example. So I was in a conversation with some of like four or five of some of the top cannabis growers and um and like distribution companies in the country just getting to listen to them give advice and tips on how to get into the cannabis industry um i've been in conversations with i've been uh, i listened to a few conversations talking about what happened yesterday um i cannot emphasize enough like this app is so black okay it is so black so black like they're like it's open to everyone, but the platform is diverse as fuck. And there's a lot of black conversations going on in the chat room. So I really enjoyed, uh, I went into another room the other night called Black People Don't Like the Truth. Woo! We got into it. Oof. I, I just was listening. And there was probably about, uh, probably about 12 people in the speaker panel that were talking. Well, they weren't all talking. There was two or three people talking the most. But, woo! We got into some good topics and also just, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to just listen in on those conversations, right? Sometimes like we wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have the opportunity to listen to a bunch of people who, you know, are successful in a cannabis industry and giving their tips and, and tricks about the industry in any other platform they like not that they have to even know that i exist but like i would i would i get that on instagram or twitter not in in an interactive way so in that kind of group discussion so it's so great for cultivating conversations in that way crafty elf girl hello and happy new year it's been a minute since i caught up caught you live how are you doing i'm doing great and don't worry it's been a minute since i've been live i think yeah i think i took a week last week off i did a i did an um a christmas eve live and then um and then i took last week off because i because it was new year's and uh and i can't so i did <laughs> um but now we're back and we will be back consistently every thursday and then if you don't want to watch this live stream uh if you don't want to watch the full live stream um if you miss it and catch it on the replay i take these little sections and put them into little short bits that on my channel as well so you can check out those in um on your own time uh because these um uh, these shows are definitely going to be uh on the longer side you know we're going to really hit on a lot of topics uh i think the way that i kind of organizes it organized it is that we will be doing um pop culture news every week political news every week kink news every week some sort of kink educational topic a rant and then my ponderings so that that's how the show will be set up happy new year hello dig that fro it's 1974 all over again where is your shed carpet happy new year too Thank you, uh, Chris Bagos. Willow, or sorry, Willow. Will to ba um, will to bond. Happy New Year and gra crafty elf girl. Oh my gosh, will to bond. I I had I like stumbled over your name because I realized I really only read your name. <laughs> like I'm, I'm not sure if I've ever like said your name out loud. And then I was like trying to say it, and I was trying to put like William and bondage in there. No, will to bond. Um, let's see, and. Crafty up girl, I'm doing as great as I could be, uh, given the current status of the world. So, more about Clubhouse. Uh, I cannot, I cannot recommend it enough. Um, especially if you are in any sort of industry where you need a network, like there are shit ton of real estate agents on there. Um, black real estate agents and and investment brokers and 
um, conversations going on about dating, interracial dating, black love, um, conversations going out on about politics, queer rooms. Oh, there's so many queer rooms. Um, and obviously kink and, and that stuff on there too. So I would recommend if you have an Apple, Apple device to go check out Clubhouse. Like it, it like I give it a, a good, ref I would give it a good referral. Um, and I will be on there constantly. So if you ever wanted to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, not one-on-one, -on -one, but if you ever wanted to talk to me, um, in that kind of group setting, you can check me out on Clubhouse. I will be on Clubhouse probably three to four nights a week, <laughs> but definitely, um, hosting Rope Bondage and Shibari discussions every Monday at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Clubhouses. Okay, let me, I'm going to give you one little other taste. Oh, man, see, this is the one thing I did, I ran out of time to do, which was to get all of these pre-loaded in here, um, all these pictures. So you guys will just have to deal. So here is a little taste of what the app looks like. Um, these are, this is, this is two different screenshots of the screen. So this screen, ooh, ooh, this screen right here on the, uh, on the left is showing what your feed looks like, right? So you see, um, when you go follow people, you get to see, uh, what, e what rooms those people are in or are going to. Um, and those are the rooms that show up. So you have to kind of curate your feed by following people that you think are going to be talking about things that you think are important. Um, so, and then you see on the right here is going to be a, a screenshot of what the rooms actually look like. And like those four little profiles at the top, through Zach, Alex, Jeet, um, they are speaking in the room right now or able to speak right now. And everyone below them, uh, is, it doesn't have access to turning on their mic. Uh, but you can raise your hand with that little hand button down there um, and ask and, and pretty much raise your hand and the speakers can bring you up to speak. Bruce has that little green thing uh, next to his name. That means he's the moderator. You can have many moderators. I've seen rooms with like 10 moderators or one moderator. Um, and if you don't want to talk, you don't have to talk. You can just listen in the audience or you can go up and ask a question into like the speaker box and then you can the speakers can put you back down in the audience. Um, also, once you start, once you have a profile, you can start a room. You can start a room about anything, talking l about literally anything you want. Sometimes I've seen rooms on there at nights where people are like, hey, the rooms uh, suck tonight and I can't find one I like. Um, hmm, sorry. And I can't find one that I like. And that's like literally the title of the room. And it's just a bunch of people in there just talking about random topics. Um, yeah, let's see, Aaron Watts said, downloading it now. Yes, check it out. If you uh, follow me on Twitter, you can DM me and I actually, I may have, may, 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 I may have some invites. I may have some extra invites. They nor they only give you one when you join the app, but I, I must have done something because they gave me a few extras, like um, a week and a half or like two weeks after I um, joined. Uh, Chris Fago said the seventies was my adolescence. I know these things. <laughs> oh, am I bringing you back with the fro with the fro? I just found something different. I just, obviously I just took my locks out. So, and I haven't, um, I haven't put them back in yet. So, <laughs> um, so I decided to give you something different. Yeah, I like to give a look every now and again. Uh, Crafty Elf Girl said, the way you are talking about it, Clubhouse, makes it sound like one of those old party, or old school party lines. Old, sc old school party lines. Oh, are you talking about Clubhouse or my fro? <laughs> like, are you talking about doing the hustle down like a do, 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 Soul Train, that's what I'm trying to think of. Um, let's see. Susan W said, I think Clubhouse is available on Android too. No, no, there's, there's, unfortunately, we've already made this mistake <laughs> in my friend group. As of yesterday, as far as I'm aware, there's not an Android version yet. It's only on Apple. And, 
Um, I haven't seen anyone really been able to find a way to get around that other than just like buying a cheap Apple device um, or waiting, <laughs> unfortunately, until it comes out on Android. I hope it, I'm assuming, no, no, I did read on their website that that, that is the plan to be able to have it accessible in Android as well. I was meaning the app. Okay, good. Well, then I just had a hustle moment. <laughs> um, all right. Let's uh, let's get into our next topic. Let's get into our next topic. So it was a coup yesterday. Please get in the comments. I'd love to hear how other people feel about this. Um, I was in, like I said, I was in a couple of clubhouse rooms last night, listening to people just talk about uh, one of the rooms. Uh, they the title of the room was the the white the, like kind of like like the white people like, like the Proud Boys revolting had the wrong message but the right idea. And uh, you know, I mean, I've been talking about revolt, uh, revolt. A lot on here. Uh, Aaron Watts, if you can't do Twitter, you can email me directly um, at madampaw17 uh, at gmail.com. My email is on like my profile page on YouTube for the for the channel, as well as it should be in the description of all my videos. So you can email me if you are interested in getting an invitation for Clubhouse. Uh, Crafty F Girl said, I love your transitions. Oh, Crafty F Girl. That is like such a good compliment on my day by day because I took a long time trying to put those together and I don't have Adobe After Effects. <laughs> so I really appreciate that you noticed. Thank you. Um, so back to the coup. Um, morons, they, they ruined their lives and I don't pity them. Yes. Okay. So a few, here's my hot takes from the coup because I'm assuming that y'all like, I'm assuming y'all know what happened. And if you don't, your level of being plugged into the matrix needs to, <laughs> you know, we need to wake up a little bit. Uh, unless you're like a child, that's an excuse, but then you shouldn't be watching this live stream because it's 18 up. Huh, huh, huh. Okay. So hot takes, obviously the police didn't do shit. Didn't do shit. Are we surprised? No. Um, to be honest, I'm not surprised about much of the big things that happened yesterday. I think the things that have kind of Surprised me is some of the little moments, the, some of the little clips and videos that people have gotten. There was one video of a bunch of the Congress staff cleaning up, like, all the debris and glass and shit that was broken, like, sweeping. And it was, like, five black guys. And I was just like, can we just stop for a moment and just process the fact that these five black guys, yeah, they're getting paid, but, like, they're having to clean up after this racist insurrection why while you know pretty much like 80 percent a bunch of old white people go back in there and it just uh, i just didn't like the way that looked um from what i'm finding out now i believe four people actually died one person uh one lady was shot and died she was shot by the um secret service because the the vice president was there Okay, so that's a big deal, right? Like, not that it wouldn't have been a big deal if the vice president wasn't there, but that means Secret Service was in the building, and yet this mob still got in the motherfucking building. Um, I don't, I mean, I know everybody knows, I know everyone's seen the memes, but, like, look, if that was Black Lives Matter, like, you already saw how they came out for when Black Lives Matter marched down there, like, there would have been a bunch of dead fucking people, and they absolutely would have used deadly force. Uh, let's see, some of the cops were caught on camera taking selfies with some of the protesters in the building. Like they've already started to come in the building and there's cops just fucking casually taking pictures with protesters. There's videos of cops, multiple videos of, of people breaking the line, um, the cop line, but then also like what line? There was like six fucking cops in some of these videos. Like what the fuck? Like what the fuck? Um, let's see. Uh, I, I know that like senators have to come out and they like need to show like, but I do feel a like, no, let me be honest. Let me, let me not, let me not just be kind for the YouTubes. Cause I said this yesterday. I didn't have one ounce of empathy for any of the senators or 
representatives. Like, I understand that's a traumatic situation and they were probably in fear for their life. But even the Democrats. Y'all bring this on yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, our government brings this on yourself. You can only oppress and beat down the working class for so long. Not even talking about racial divides at this point, because part of me is not necessarily, like, that coup was idiotic, right? Like, when I said revolution, that's not what the fuck I was talking about. Like, nowhere in my revolution plans was it storm the fucking Congress buildings at all. But if it was, we definitely wouldn't have been not wearing masks, we would have been covered head to toe in non-markable, all black, you know, like, clothing, and not taking pictures of ourselves in Congress, in the Congress building, and then tweeting about it when our Twitter has our first and last name. Like, it's just so idiotic. Like, it's just so idiotic. It's insane. But, yeah, so the police failed. Uh, let's see, tons of people have resigned, as they should. Uh, Trump has started to back down and finally kind of did somewhat of a resignation speech. Um, because he got backed in a fucking corner. I mean, he didn't really have any, many other ways out. Uh, and as well as the fact that, like, they're seriously considering trying to, uh, impeach him and throw him out, uh, or possibly invoke, I think it's the 25th, um amendment but don't quote me that might not be 100 percent accurate i just remember that 25 was next to whatever the law is that says that um that gives direction on how they can remove the president from office okay sorry let me just check your comments for a second um let's see moron they ruin their lives and i don't pity them chris bacos yeah no i don't i don't pity them i don't pity anyone like that was stupid like, that was just plain fucking stupid. And in 2020 to do that and think, like, you're recording it, other people are recording it. There's fucking cameras in the building. The news is there. Like, you go into jail. Like, I hope you got your pictures and you're having fun, but you're going to fucking jail. I think they've arrested, like, 55 people, I think, in the last, like, news update that I watched. Uh, but <laughs> that's clearly not enough. But they are using face recognition software to try to uh, find some of these people, and they absolutely need to. And I'm going past that. I also think they should prosecute some of the senators, as well as Donald Trump, Donald Trump, but anyone who perpetuated the lie that uh, continued this cult-like following that caused that violence. Uh, let's see, Erin Watts, something like this has been abling... Uh, has been talked about since the election. It was just a matter of when. Yeah, no, no, they knew. They knew. They knew. They've been planning about it. Uh, they've been planning for this. Trump has straight out fucking told us. So, like, it's not like security didn't know. So, again, I am glad to see that some people from, I think, like, the, one of the police chiefs retired or something, like, a bunch of people in the uh, security departments of the city, of uh, Washington, D.C., as well as national security are resigning, and they motherfucking should. Because that's fucking embarrassing. Embarrassing. That a bunch of fucking redneck idiots, I'm not even going to say redneck, just a bunch of Trump fucking idiots who believe in shit like Q QAnon and that the election was really stolen was able to fucking get into Congress. And if they had... They did have weapons, but if they had been not so idiotic and smarter about their plans, they could have blown up the whole building. They could have killed a bunch of, like, they could have killed a bunch of Congress people. And I'm going to be honest, I have mixed feelings about that, too. <laughs> when I was like, oh, like, I'm listening to people talk about, like, oh, this is what could have happened. And I'm like, I mean, some of us have been hoping COVID would take some of you out, so... That's the, I'm, I'm in some moral conundrums right now with what is going on, you know? Uh, let's see. We need uh, LJ Clark. I think we need to throw a party now that Mitch McConnell has been dethroned. Mm, no, I will not throw a party until Mitch McConnell is um, chopped liver and served inside his own turtle shell. I'm not going to eat it, but that's how, uh, that's when I will be happy about Mitch McConnell. 
Uh, he needs to like I actually I, I'm a sadist, so I rarely wish death on on people that I hate. I normally wish no. I hope you live a long life in misery, but Mitch McConnell needs to fucking die. <laughs> Said it. Don't give a fuck. Not a threat, FBI. Not gonna kill him. Don't come after me. But like, if he tripped and bumped his head and went into a coma, like, wouldn't be mad about it. Uh, Aaron Watts said the police let them in. Oh wait, let me say that kind of how like Aaron Watts wrote it. The police let them in. <laughs> um, and took selfies. Absolutely, absolutely. There's like, we have video. Like, I mean, I just to me, I just sometimes I wonder like. People in 2020, you realize that, like, anything you do outside your house publicly, that is crazy. It's going to get recorded. People are going to record it. Um, I felt sorry for people who worked in the building. The senators and Congress people uh, chose to be there. The senators and Congress people that, that were elected had to be there. Uh, quite a few, uh, not quite a few. I've heard a few, uh, that a few of them were more prepared than the security team and told their staff to stay home that day um, because they didn't know what was going to happen. So I feel sorry for the staff. Um, if you're an elected official, you know what the fuck you signed up for. And just because America has been a stable country and you haven't really actually had a threat or been in fear of your life in that position, you're a public servant, you have security, that's part of the job. You signed up for the fact that, yes, sometimes there may be a uh, risk. They're risk aware. You know what I'm saying? They consented. Uh, and if you get to continue to make the decisions that they make and destroy people's lives and also kill fucking people, like make decisions or not make decisions, meaning just being slow to act, that kills people, I have less empathy for your own traumatic situation. I have empathy and I, don't, I always want the best in healing, but... Mm, You know, you know what I mean? Let's just go back to like revolution eat the rich, you know? Uh Susan W said you got it. Uh Will to Bound said, oh, they 100 percent threatened him with the 25th to make him come back. Back uh to make him come back down. Yeah, I mean, I know that they're threatening, but I know some people I like there's already been articles brought into the House of Representatives about invoking the 25th. Um he really needs to worry about the vice president Pence, because Pence was pretty fucking pissed, and Pence has been ride or die. Uh, I had actually heard a good take today that someone said that like Pence had planned on Trump either dying or um, or getting impeached, because I, I think that's why that's one reason why Pence took the job is because he thought he could be president. Um, and so if he has the opportunity to do it, even if it's for fucking eight days. And we've already clearly seen that everything about this organi or this um, organization is uh, ran from the heart of a narcissist <laughs> uh, with the energy of narcissism. So I wouldn't put it past it. Uh, we need to hold social media accountable for letting this get to this point. Yeah. I agree. I agree that social media played a part. I'm hesitant to hold, I'm, I'm hesitant to say that because of just terms and service updates and how the way that the social media companies, Facebook and corporations will take that is going to also harm activists, sex workers, uh, kinksters, and people trying to get other type of information out. So I'm just, I don't know what the solution is with social media companies. Um, yeah, I don't have a solution there. I'm not. I'm a businesswoman, but I'm not. I don't know enough about that to see. I mean, for from the King community, I know you know you can check out my video on it, but I know what we need. Um, and, and I have a couple of different ways to get there, but you know everything takes money. Um. So yeah, I don't think that I fully like process like even though i wasn't surprised with what happened like i've been i've been expecting that like i'm a big fan of bill maher he's been saying day one that trump is not fucking leaving um 
but I still kind of haven't really processed as like as a black woman as a you know an activist in this country as a as a citizen of this country like that is even though we weren't there like it is also traumatizing for us to be like I'm what like this demo- this solid democracy I thought I was raised in there was a coup with a bunch of Confederate flag waving Nazis in twenty twenty like it is still that kind of thing again it's like I'm not surprised this happened saw it coming. But internally, just trying to process, like, oh, man, is that, how do we move forward? And, like, I've heard a lot of conversations of, like, we've got to come together and love and move forward. And I'm like, that sounds great um, when you're talking about, you know, Trump's Trump supporters and, you know, the MAGA supporters and whatever else and everyone else. That sounds great. But we can't do that about morally ethical issues like racism. Like, I can't kumbaya and come together with my slave master or my oppressor or a KKK member, and nor should I be expected to do that. And I'm worried that the democratic establishment doesn't realize that that is how a lot of this country feels, and they do need to treat some of those senators similar. I And I know Biden's the come together president um, and, you know, healing and that's what we need. But like, we can't go back to the norm because the norm was already fucked. The norm got us here. But, but we also don't have the right people in place to go the places we need to go. If that makes sense. Um, Crafty Elk Grove said, that's a good point about social media. I don't, I didn't think of that perspective. Yeah, one of the, uh, kind of theories that I had with kind of the crackdown with, a, a more sexual content on Instagram is actually that, like, yeah, that's what they're saying it is, but that, I don't think, I, I don't believe that that was, a ri- that's originally the reason why they're doing it. I think that that is a clever way, PR-wise, to target a lot of activists and organizers because guess who's been doing a lot of organizing and activism work on instagram and facebook and some of these social media apps sex workers sex workers of color so it's not even just disfranchising your income right it's also genuinely like at the core trying to make it so that we cannot communicate with each other and organize think about how much organize how much um activists and and community organizers do rely on social media platforms to get messages out to get information out this is when we're going to protest this is what you need to know about this watch out for this street whatever else we're raising money we're mutual aid funding like whatever we're doing this is that's part of what i've been doing on a small scale in the last couple of months and you know that's why excuse me learning my uh, losing aspects of my instagram account not aspects the whole accounts uh was frustrating because that was where i was getting information out which is a a big part of being an advocate or an activist is getting out information out to the people so that was kind of one of my theories about the updated terms of service on instagram is that this isn't just a target at adult like content to protect the children's because Do you think the corporations and the people at the top of the corporations give a fuck about whether your children see booty cheeks smack it up and down in some rope bondage? No, no, they don't give a fuck. What they do give a fuck about is is, uh, maintaining the status quo, right? Um, And money. And at the end of the day, there's more money coming from um, vanilla and and, uh, family-friendly type of content than uh than the adult content or at least it's more socially acceptable i'm yeah you'd have to look at the numbers to see <laughs> which one's actually doing better um let's see aaron watts and black people are always held to the standard of needing to be the better person and resolve things out of violence say that say that say that okay like you're fooling yourself if you think that we're going to get what we want, Black people, without reciprocal violence. 
I'll wait, but I'm pretty sure there's like less than five times in history where people were freed or liberated from oppression without violence. I wait and just like, you know, if you guys got any, just shout them out all the times that people have gotten liberated themselves from their oppressors and freedom and slave masters without violence. Because they're, they use violence to keep us in this oppressed position. Uh, I know, I'm so glad it's, it's uh, I'm hearing people talk, talk about even more, but I think there's a, it's probably not a new documentary, but I just heard um, someone talk about a documentary, but talking about how much Martin Luther King had changed his message before the FBI murdered that motherfucker. He changed his position from being turn the other cheek, peaceful, let's be better, to, oh shit, like, if the people that you're trying to fight against don't have any morality, then peaceful protest doesn't fucking work. Dema said, hello, just got in here, uh, just got here, so I'll listen before I chime in. Chime in whenever you like, Dema. We are just, I'm just ranting and giving some hot takes about uh, the coup yesterday. I don't know why, I just love calling it the coup. Oh, oh yes, the coup. Yeah, like I feel like I should be at, like a high tea, like with a fancy like hat and, you know, like, like the aristocrats. <laughs> it's like, oh, I heard the peasants had a coup yesterday. Wasn't it so entertaining to watch? Um, and I can say that because uh, because it wasn't a Black Lives Matter march. I'm gonna be honest. Like, um, I wouldn't necessarily again if if this if the exact same thing had happened, but it was Black Lives Matter. I still would not be happy with what happened, and I would still be calling them fucking idiots and not agreeing with it and agreeing that that did not fucking help. So I just want to emphasize that because I think some people think like, well, if this was your people, like, no. That's not, again, what I mean when I say revolution. Revolution, it's not, to be honest, it's actually better for us to harm rich people's bank accounts than it is to even threaten their life. So when it comes to revolution as people, it, it means like, uh, boycotting work. Like, imagine if 50% of the country, of the adult working country, just said, I'm not working, I'm not traveling, I'm not doing anything for this corporation that has enslaved me, I'm staying home until you guys fix something. And I know most people think of that like, how can I do? I can never afford to do that. That's 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 part of the problem, and that's part of what keeps us in that position of uh in this position of the haves and the haves nots is that the poor people are like, I don't have the money, time, I got to keep roof over my head, da 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 da, to do that. But if you got enough of us to do it, how long? How long do you think the rich people and the politicians are gonna hold out on shit? If half the shit isn't fucking working, is it running? There's no pilots. There's no, like, there, there's like, there's the, the economy, the country is not working, right? We haven't ever experienced that before, not even during fucking COVID, because nothing ever shut all the way the fuck down, if you remember correctly. Let's see. Uh, Will Baum said, um, F coming together, people need to face consequences. Hello? Yes. And here's the thing. Part of coming together is also unhealthy because if you've caused harm, you need to be held motherfucking accountable. We cannot heal. We cannot do restorative justice. We cannot learn and grow if we have not acknowledged what we did wrong and took accountability for it. And I'm seeing this within my, you know, my own King community and that some of the people I've called out, I really think they think they're going to wait out the clock and never have to take accountability, acknowledge that they did any harm or fucking apologize publicly. 
Um, I, I really think they think that like, oh, if I just hang, like if I just hang low for long enough, people will no. Nah. No. Nah. Like true again, true restorative justice and healing and growth can't happen if you haven't actually acknowledged what the fuck you did wrong. How are you gonna correct it if you don't know what you did wrong? I mean, has anyone watched Westworld? This was like a part of the theory of the first fucking, like the whole fucking series is that the way we are able to grow as humans is our memory and being able to remember when we make fucking mistakes so that we can learn from them. Um, let's see. Aaron Watts said, how can we do that when the oppressors who are the face of this country act worse than the expectation? Oh, stop having an expectation. I mean, that's why some shit doesn't surprise me is that I am very, I am very, uh, I'm very aware of how much <laughs> rich people and the government don't give a fuck about anyone else except for them and theirs. And I think that a lot of the people in this country have not acknowledged that yet. Like there's things that you would tell them that the government's doing and they are rich people are doing and they literally don't want to believe it. Um, or won't believe it. So we have to just like, I mean, look at history. Why do you have any expectations for the oppressors? And I want to be specific that like, I'm talking about systemically as a group on a macro level, not individual people. Like when I say oppressors, when I say white people, I'm clearly talking about racist people. I'm clearly talking about people still perpetuating these narratives. Um, Dema said, I second, I second that about the bank account. Money is the only thing they understand. Exactly. Exactly. And unfortunately, they have instilled that into Black culture as well. Where success within Black culture looks like toxic white capitalism. I'm not even going deeper on that. I'm just going to let you sit on that. Yeah, Aaron Watts says, I'll try not to have expectations. And Dema said, having no expe expectations is very freeing. Yeah, I mean, I agree to have less expectations about just people in general. Like, I think part of this process of lowering my expectations was when I was younger and I realized, wow, humans suck. Like, humans are pretty flawed. And nine times out of ten, if no one's looking and they don't think they're going to get caught, humans are not the best fucking moral people. And understanding that um understanding that just allowed me to when i am encounter new humans and their behavior is crazy i'm like well humans are inherently flawed and if we uh don't want to continue to perpetuate that toxic negativity we have to actually take initiative and uh and do some things in our life to change that because that is the default for humans is uh is not good it's not like i you know i've had conversations on this channel before like are good are humans inherently evil uh or bad or evil and i'm like i used to say evil and it's not necessarily that i think humans are inherently evil i think our society has brainwashed humans to be inherently self-preserving over community preserving like, I, I think a lot of the different topics that we're trying to, that we're talking about and theories we're talking about as we're, as this movement is happening and this political environment that's happening, um, oh man, god damn it, totally just lost my train of thought. Oh man, it was going to be a good thought. Shit, I know what happened. Oh, got it back. <laughs> Um, but all of those things, I think the root of some of the problems is the thought is is the society we've created in which preservation of self and um and and things that that person owns is more important than any than than community, than friends, than partners, than anything else than community. And we've also created a society where like if you build a mass of wealth, you get to own it like you are the only one who created that 
right? I think I talked about this maybe my last live stream, but like there are no self-made millionaires. Like self-made, there's not. Unless you worked alone out in the wilderness on your own property and created your own fucking internet and made your own food and never had to hire a service or hire an assistant or ever have any help or employees, you are not motherfucking self-made. Because guess what? Paying the employees doesn't mean you own them. Right? So I think some of those, um, some of those narratives that we've been brainwashed in our society, we have to break some of those. And it's going to be, it's going to, it's, it's hard to break some of those because either you are not in that wealthy spot and a lot of us are just aspiring to be there and we don't want that opportunity to be in that wealthy privileged spot to go away, you know, before we can get there, even though. 90% of us aren't ever fucking getting there, maybe even more, right? And the person that is in those privileged positions doesn't want to destroy the system that made them rich and privileged. Hello, uh, successful black people. Successful black people. Not saying they're all bad, but I'm just saying there's a lot of successful black people that are not trying to get rid of any aspect of the establishment or this system because it benefits them. Think about how many people, think about your friends and people you know and yourself. If if you're worth $50 million and you're a black person right now, What incentive do you have to destroy the system? You've benefited from it. You may not be at oppressor level, but you've benefited from it. And so why would we think those people are are going to be helping us bring the system down? The black elites or... um, I just heard, oh, the black bourgeoisie, I think. I, I learned a new, I learned a new term <laughs> in, in Clubhouse, which I didn't know. Like I knew about what that meant, which is pretty much like the black elite, but I didn't know that's what they called it. And I just kind of French and I like it. But yeah, I just think that that's something that we need to consider as a black community. Um and especially if we're, you know, some of us are sitting around and like waiting for the next Martin Luther King to come out. Like, one, I don't think that that, that if if we had a, a leader in this movement like a Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King came from the church. Um, white Jesus's church. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, even if you're Southern Baptist, it is just a branch off from the original white oh, Jesus. Um, plus, if you are of any color, nothing about any of Christianity's religions has anything to do with where you fucking came from or your ancestors. Do you think our African ancestors worshiped white Jesus? No, they were fucking witches and goddesses and doing fucking sex magic. And we need to not forget that. So if somebody like a, like a Martin Luther King was to kind of play that, that role in the movement, um, that person is not coming from the black elite. It's not going to be a rapper or a fucking, um, you know, show host or a podcaster. That's fa- like, that's not who the fuck that's going to be. They're benefiting from the system. Why would they try to bring a system down that they're benefiting from? Cause they don't, uh, if you're benefiting from something, why would you want to try something that you don't know if you're going to benefit from that in that end? Like, you know, just something to consider. Um, let's see. Zulima uh, Rim, Ramos. Let me see if I can talk tonight. We have to make the rich colonizers do what is ethical because they have had decades upon decades to change. Expecting them to do so on their own, I agree, is silly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, you're, and you're not necessarily going to get them to do what is ethical based on their own decision-making process. Like, again, some of them will have to be forced. Okay. 
Gun point. Uh, Damas said, human flaws is what Octavia E. Butler wrote so brilliantly, brilliantly about. Yeah, actually, I think Alexander had talked to me about um, that author before. That name looks familiar. I mean, how could we not be flawed? You know what I'm saying? Like, and the entitlement and ego required to think that humans have evolved to the this is the last specimen. Like we are it. Like again, the some of the arrogance in and an ego involved in just in religions in general, where I'm like, wait, so there's an all-knowing God that knows the future, the past, that knows every move you're gonna make, that can be um, uh, uh, you know, in every place at once, and 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 is three people and all of these things. But you're telling me that some humans from thousands of years ago knew what that god wants you're telling me that humans figured out what that advanced being wants in life wants for us on this world and wrote it in a book and you're expecting me to believe that just say like really like that's just at the baseline crazy oh oh and the people that are writing the book about this uh weren't alive when the human version even fucking existed like it's just insanity so i've been i've been bringing this up a lot too i think i posted this recently on my twitter but one of the aspects within the black community that is hurting the black community is our overall dedication to religion and white jesus the fact that we like we're talking about building wealth in our community how many black people are helping build the wealth of a mega church How's that helping the black community? If you're a, a you know, if you're a black person in America and you're worth over like fifty million dollars, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Perfectly honest. Like that is the perfect example. Um that is a perfect example of not giving a fuck about the community, about benefiting from the oppressor system and forgetting the fucking rest of us. I know I've mentioned before, like Oprah, but like even uh, what's his name that does the um, Tyler Perry. You can go fuck yourself too, Tyler Perry. Thanks for the studios uh, with you know famous black people's names on them, but you're still a billionaire. And you didn't make a billion dollars off of solely white people's money. And last time I checked, if we were going to do a collection of black folks of a billion dollars, I don't think our first priority would have been to build fancy fucking filming studios on a Civil War battleground. It looks really great in the press. It's really good for PR. It sounds really great when you take people around to like show them and do the tour. But guess what? That isn't bringing nothing for us. That isn't actually helping the community and you're still a billionaire. Why do you have so much money? You don't need so much money. Capitalism is evil. And for black folks to continue to perpetuate cap capitalism is again, perpetuating an, uh, an oppressive system. We lived in communities and barter and trade systems where we came from originally okay this money and like i heard and this is specifically on the clubhouse app because this topic came up in a conversation i had the other day I, I wealthy black people talk about money and just like it's sad it's sad it's sad because it's like they really have a high value of themselves and think very highly of themselves but also it's really sad to see them still perpetuating uh just not really actually being able to have freedom because capitalism is a system that is built on having to exploit people and oppression No sane person in power is going to want equality. 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that kind of goes back to like this idea of like how people get into leadership, right? Where most people who should be in leadership are never going to be in leadership, right? Like the person who needs to be the president doesn't have a big enough ego to actually run for president. Think about it. Think about just small teams you've been on in your life, whether it's at work or like sports teams growing up. Like how often did the person that was really kind of the leader not be the person who was big, loud, and boisterous and had the title? I mean, I played on sports teams, my high school basketball, I played basketball for like 10 years um, growing up. And my high school basketball team, my senior year, my coach pulled me aside because um, I wasn't, uh, they voted, uh, they voted for the team captain. And even though I was, this is not brag, this is just fucking reality. I was the best player on the team and was the main point guard when uh, the seniors from the year before also got to vote on who the, the captain was for next year. And I wasn't that popular. Oh, and I was really black and it was all fucking white people in a very racist part of our country. Um, so I didn't get, uh, I didn't get the, uh, the captain title, even though I probably deserved it. I also didn't give a fuck. Like I just kind of like moved on. Cause I was like, whatever, I'm going to be playing every single minute of this entire season and passing me all the ball. So um, I don't really care if I have a C on my fucking jacket, but my coach pulled me aside and let me know. Um, he said, you know what? I don't necessarily care about the C on your jacket, but I want you to know that I know who the real captain of this team is. Um, and because leadership really is not something, leadership doesn't look like, hey, Leader, come follow me. Hey, 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 come follow me. Hey, you, 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 follow me. How can I really lead well if all of my attention is just trying to get people to follow me? Good leaders just go do shit. They're like, oh man, this sucks. The community needs this. Let's create this. And then as they're on that process, all of a sudden they're like, oh shit, all these people follow me? Okay, well, let me get this shit together a little bit more now. You know what I'm saying? Let's cross my T's and dot my I's now that I got all these shit, all the, not, not shit, all these people uh, following me. So um, I think, <clears throat> you know, again, this is all like really having to like take ourselves out of the fucking matrix of the lie that has been our entire fucking society. I always used to get so frustrated um, at work and, and trying to work up into management, especially in restaurants. And like owners would come would, like come in or like GMs would like come in and whatever they did, like specifically the two restaurants I worked at, um, a couple people, whenever the owner would come in, would just run over to the owner and just lick his asshole and we're doing this and I made this new drink and this is blah 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 let me brag blah 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 and also not take as many fucking tables and you know like everyone else would be running their food because they're you know licking the owner's asshole and I was would get frustrated because those people would still get the management position like me as an owner, if I come into my restaurant and I see one of my employees taking time to have conversations with me and yuck it up, I'm wondering why you aren't doing your motherfucking job. And I think it's interesting, going back to ego, that's all about fucking ego, when these GMs appreciated that ass licking more than people who are actually fucking working. Because when owners came into the restaurant, I didn't change anything about myself. I would say hi if I saw them, but I'm trying to make your restaurant money. Remember the business you own? So why do I need to lick your asshole? I should already be impressing you by the work I'm doing. The work for your business, which I don't own. Um, but yeah, in many of those situations, I would see... Um, other people, and again, I'm sure there's probably some race uh, aspects going in there too, because yes, they were most of the time white girls, but I could never understand why my genuine hard work didn't mean anything if I didn't kiss some fucking assholes. And that's why I work for myself now, because I wasn't going to kiss any assholes. I don't want to kiss any assholes. It's not my kink. In my kink, in my real life, in my business, I don't do it. I don't like to lick assholes. Sorry. I'll look at the things though. Um, but yeah, I think that is really like, when you break these things down, it's not like, they're not like new problems. You've probably had conversations with people about these problems. It's just, we haven't 
really put them into the context of like, oh, this is happening on like a macro level in Congress and not just in my management office. Um, let's see. Crafty Elf Girl said, all great points. Thank you. I, I feel like I'm just kind of, um, ranting here, but. Um, Billy's Big Top, the person who is better, best suited never goes for it. Yeah. Because here's the thing, like, and this, and this is, I've been able to explore more as I've learned more about personality types. But again, the person that you need to do the job doesn't have the aspects in the personality that require this big ass ego. And if you, again, we've, I've mentioned this on my show, but if you think about who's been, if you think about being a politician or being the president of the United States, there has got to be a certain level of narcissism to sit down and go, and I don't care if I have, like, if, if I had a Harvard level degree and eight years of experience, I was a lawyer. I don't even care about that. Like, you still have to have a certain level of narcissism to sit down and go, me, me, out of all the people in this entire country, I should run it. I'm the smartest and uh, I should be in charge of the entire world. Like, th there is a certain level of narcissism. I don't care how many PhDs I have. I don't think I'll ever get to that point in my entire life, and I'm a pretty confident woman. But at no point will I ever be like, yeah, I could do it. I think I could run the country. I could do it. I could do it. No, no. So to discount the fact that that is required a little bit to be in that job, right? And that goes right down to every other position of power. Um, yeah, again, it just, the ego is an evil thing if it is not in balance. An unbalanced ego is a harmful, harmful thing. Uh, Will to bounce that, I forget the society, but at least one ancient um, people selected their leaders via a random draft and it was considered a civic duty and people were chosen at random to fill roles. Yeah, I am, I'm not against that. Um, And I heard, I'm gonna forget where I heard this, but I heard a really good, a uh, really good analogy for that in favor of this, right? Um, because people say, oh, you can't just have you can't just randomly pick from society um for a president or for judges or for all these high level. You can't just do that. You can't you can't just do that. Uh, because then what if you get someone stupid? All right, let's play with that. Not like I'm saying that the person who is in office right now is not stupid, but imagine through these last nine to 10 months, if we just had a regular bloat Joe Smo that we picked out of a fucking hat in the presidency, nine times out of 10, that person is gonna be in that position, is gonna look around and go, oh wow, I was a plumber before this and I don't know shit about a pandemic. And then he's, they're gonna go, hey, do you, do you know shit about, can you get the people who know stuff about this? Yeah, 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 the doctors and stuff, we need the guy, I don't know anything about this. And then guess who would have been in charge? The doctors, and not a narcissistic fucking asshole, right? Most, even not stupid people, even pretty intelligent people would get in that position, and if they had to deal with COVID, they would go, who's the expert at this? Who's the expert at this? Uh, can we verify they're an expert at this? Great. Let's do what they do, what they say we should do. Instead of being like, nah, I think I know better. Let's try bleach. Let's just try it. Just, is there a way that we can like inject it? Or is there a way that we can like harness the sun rays and put it into a syringe so we can just put the sun rays directly into the bloodstream? I'm just saying I am for the random pick of civic duty. And I also think that like it helps so that we don't have families still in politics, right? That can live their whole life in politics. You have a two to four year term. I even say like a three year term. You, when you're done, you get your job back. Like you can go right back to living your life the way you were living it before. Um, I'm for that. I <laughs> There would be less corruption. I th I know people think it's crazy, but like they have brainwashed you. The rich and powerful have brainwashed you to think that you can't do these jobs without degrees, without going to Harvard, without knowing these people, and it's all fucking bullshit. 
It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. And it's a lie they have to keep up to remain in power so that we don't actually get organized enough to say, hey, you know what? This is all a lie. Maybe we should eat them. I think we should eat them. Are you hungry? I'm hungry, Cappy. And I think we should eat the wretch. I think so. Because look at all these lies. Like, we need to get that mad. I don't know what's going to take. They stormed the fucking capital. Are we mad enough yet? Billy, uh, Billy's Big Top said, owner should not be so insecure that they need to uh, people to kiss their butt. Yeah, they shouldn't. But I can tell you from working in restaurants from Florida in Texas all the way back up to Seattle, um, I've seen that exact scenario happen at least to me personally four separate times where consistently an employee would literally stop working when an owner came in, lick their asshole, and they got a management position. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Miss, uh, Miss Marita? Um, oh gosh, restaurants are such a microcosm of the world. Oh my God, right? Really? Seriously? Wow. Hmm. Thank you for that. Slightly triggered, but like, um, yeah, I mean, I will continue to say that 95% of people who are running restaurants are absolute fucking crooks. And I will say that to my grave until they pay their employees $15 an hour and don't require tipping. Um, to be honest, you should pay your employees $20 an hour and don't require tipping. I've mentioned this before, but like tipping is a, is the entire idea of tipping is rooted in racism. It was created to be able to pay black people less. And the fact that there are still mainly in the South for a reason, um, there are still states that say that they can pay you two thirteen an hour or not pay you $15 an hour or still has fucking tipping is racist. It's fucking racist. And it's really frustrating as someone who grew up in the service industry and who lived off tips for most of their life and who over tips my service people I'm in a conundrum where I'm frustrated, where I'm like, I don't, I shouldn't have to give this to you, but you still need it because we haven't changed the system yet. So I'm going to, but you should be getting paid $20 an hour. I, customers, customers at this point should be like, but why? They, again, this is, that's the brainwashing is that they, you've gotten so comfortable with, oh, well, when I go out to eat, I know I have to tip 20% extra and just putting that in the budget instead of saying, no, how about you pay for that owner of this restaurant? Because again, 50% of them stealing money from the, re embezzling money from the restaurant anyways. It's not like they don't have it and they don't pay for Falcon health insurance. So like, where's the money going? Where's the money going? Fucking crooks, crooks, okay? Don't get me started on the service industry. <laughs> Apparently you already did, so there's a tidbit of how I feel about that. Um, Let's see. Uh, oh, Suzanne W. said, I hate to go, but I was up until 3 a.m. watching the Stupid Congress. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I was also up till 3 a.m. watching Congress. Um, I don't think I fell asleep till about 4 a.m. Billy, uh, Billy's Big Top said they need to get rid of him like yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Will uh, to bounce said if anyone can be a leader, the society is enfranchised to make sure at everyone is, that everyone is given at least a basic level of ability. Yeah. Yeah. If, if anyone can be a, a leader, in, leader, the society is enfranchised to make sure. Uh, that everyone is given at least a basic level of ability. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, if the last four years hasn't gotten you on board with, you know, not the last four years, if 2020 hasn't gotten you on board with basic income and uh, and healthcare, or sorry, uh, med Medicare for all, I just I just have to question, like, what are your priorities? <laughs> um, but then I also have to realize that most, a, a majority of people are not well-informed, right? Um, we're, we're fighting that we're definitely fighting uphill on a lot of these battles um, because, you know, the way to un, the way to fix the Trump cult, right? 
if you guys have ever watched a documentary about a cult and seen one person get taken out of a cult, oftentimes, depending on how intense that cult is, it can take days or weeks to unprogram and unbrainwash that person coming out of that cult. Times 42 million. That's how many people we need to decultivize <laughs> from, I know that's not a word, so don't judge me, but like that we need to um, unbrainwash from this. Yeah, Crafty Elf said, girl, we need corporation to get out of politics too. Um, also, I love your ether rich voice. <laughs> oh, that's my, that's my, my, um, that's my Cali girl, white girl voice. Yeah, Miss um, Marita said, I wish there was more transparency with political leaders about how little we know. Yeah, well, they do that on purpose. They start, they, you know, like, they don't teach us about things in school on purpose. <laughs> There's been a long, like a, like a 30 year plan, mainly coming from the Republican side to to make being intelligent and, and intellectuals, uh, intellectualism not cool, not popular, to dumbify the fucking population, because dumb people are much easier to fucking control. And sadly, it's worked. One term max in Congress would be great. Yeah, two years at the most. And that's it. You never get to do it again. Like, you should never have to run for re-election. Two years, that's it. You're out. Bye. There's like 350 million people in this country. There's plenty of other people that should get a couple year whack at it. <laughs> Every administration has been extremely opaque since Nixon. Ooh, I would say every administration has been extremely opaque. Like, there are aspects of the government that do need to run without us knowing it, right? Um, I use the example of, like, uh, you know, when we went into Iraq, right? Like, we all joked about how, like, do we not have any battle plans? Like, are we literally just watching this battle you know like they're telling us what they're gonna do what targets they're about to hit before we're doing it um and to think that like that uh, information hasn't been approved by the military to be public for us to know because of whatever narrative they're creating right there are certain aspects of the government that like yeah i probably don't need to know that um we probably all don't need to know that um that for our safety the problem is is that if you have unethical people in those offices guess what they do they use that excuse well it's for people's protection and safety and so we don't we they use that excuse to do corporate to do corrupt things right so um at the core at the, <laughs> the core of it some of the problems are the people right but also finding ways to be able to hold people accountable um, that are in positions of power. Um, and cancel culture is not it. Okay, Google what is opaque. I need to go back to school. Uh, yeah, opposite of transparent. Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer loves Grit, one of my favorite usernames. Also, Billy Big Top, thank you for the super chat. I think you are my first super chat. So you broke my super chat, Cherry. It's Billy Bob Top. I'm um, sorry, Billy. It's Billy Bob. I'm horrible. I'm sorry. That's my uncle's name. No joke. Um, <laughs> Billy's Big Top. Um, let's see. Sorry, that probably wasn't the right term. Oh, no problem. Yeah. Um. <laughs> sorry i'm just reading the chat I mean, they're, they're talking between amongst each other so yeah okay i think thank you everyone for joining me i think you helped me process through 
my feelings about everything that went on. And at the end of the day, I we just I I cannot be discouraged. Um, nothing is discouraging on this uh, because anytime anytime during this movement that I just wanted to be like, well, maybe I should just, just fuck it and just focus on, you know, building up my own rich bank account and, you know, playing the capitalistic game. Right. Um, and, and fuck the activism and whatever else, like maybe I should just get mine. Like I thought that, but I, like, I, I thought that before, but like, that is not, uh, fulfilling for my soul. And I will not be the 80 year old black woman going to another Black Lives Matters march or social justice movement. 34, so that would be 46 years. In 46 years, if I have to be holding a sign that says, I also marched when Trump was president, I'm going to be really pissed. That's what I'm fighting for, is that I don't have to do that when I'm 80 and that my daughter has, doesn't have to spend her 30s doing activism work and like trying to be heard and and fight for her own fucking rights like that that's what motivates me no matter what discouraging shit happens i try to take it in i process it emotionally and then i have to remember that like i'm not going to be 80 still doing this let's get back to work we gotta get back to work like this has to be the last time that a social justice movement is a trending thing without um without the actual goal not parts of it like we got in other civil rights movements um miss uh miss marita said thank you for hosting this was great oh thank you um <laughs> billy's big pop that's okay billy bob sounds cooler <laughs> oh, i love a billy bob to be honest as long as he's not racist you know like i i've, I've that's why I like try to emphasize when we talk about I try I've been trying to take out redneck country southern um when I'm describing racist people because I've met some country ass redneck Billy Bobs that were not racist that were cool as fuck <laughs> um and I think that that's also a misconception that racists look like country southern white folks um and really. The, those races really let us know who they are ahead of time, right? They've got the Confederate flag on their truck, and we know. The races that are really, really, really doing a lot of the damage are the quiet racists. The ra quiet racists. The, the quiet racist. The ones that know all the woke terminology so that they can play the PR game, but still really ain't going to hire that many black people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the hot, hot buckets for this race issue during this last year was not Alabama. It wasn't in Texas. It was in Oregon. 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 One of the most liberal states in our country. Actually, I really would love to do a bit for an ad for Oregon that's like shows you all the amazing things. Do you want to live in Oregon? Portland, one of the most wokest cities. We've just decriminalized all drugs. You can get you can get marijuana here. You can drive to the beach. You can drive to the mountains. It's beautiful. The air is fresh. There's green trees. You can get to California. Sure enough, all these amazing things. And then at the end of it, it's just like, Disclaimer, this is one of the racist part, most racist parts of this entire country. You will definitely be subject to protest, uh, proud boys trying to bully you when you put gas in your car. Like, like Oregon is such a cool ass fucking state. And like, it would be like ideal state. Like, literally, it will so liberal, so liberal out there. They are ahead of the game. Um, and a lot of shit. That, you know? Yeah, Crafty Elf Girl. Shout out, shout out to Crafty Elf Girl again. She's out here just been 
doing the work whenever she's uh, on my live, she gives us some updates. But she said, actually, uh, exactly. That's why I've been busy and haven't caught your other streams lately. I've been educating people and having these those conversations and writing postcards to get people out to vote. Yeah. Crafty Elf Girl has been doing the work. Um, And I think that too is like, to be honest, I'm behind a little on my to-do list for this week. Part of that is because yesterday kind of just reared. I couldn't take my eyes away from the news. Um, But uh, I've been on Clubhouse connecting with people and having these really amazing conversations um and that that that's been that can sometimes make more progress than uh you know than putting out a podcast that not a lot of people are watching it you know so sometimes i got to take that time and have those conversations um because i think again people forget like that is it's it like yes there's work that needs to be done on the political level and on the national level and on this macro level but a lot of the work needs to be done on this individual level on this one-on-one, -on -one, let's empathize with each other's stories level. Okay, that's the coup. That's the coup. We talked about it, that's it. Next segment. This week in Kinky News, I'm going to be doing a very quick review of a um, of a Shibari educational website that popped up on my Google feed, and I just want to let you guys know about it. So, um, the The site is called, so many people, if you're into rope bondage or you're just getting to rope bondage, you do a Google search, it's pretty easy to find Shibari Study, um, which I do actually, I have a subscription to Shibari Study, like everyone is using it, it has a little bit of a monopoly on the market right now, but it is good quality content for rope, um, and so I do recommend it, and it's also affordable. This... Option, this other site I'm going to show you is actually called Shibari Academy. Um, I think that's the website, the Shibari Academy. Um, and I pretty much scanned through the whole website. I watched some of the... They have one um, section of the course. It's like a five section course and there's like 150 videos in it or something. So they have part of this section for free because to be honest, the price is out of this fucking world. It's like $800 um, for this curriculum. Um, so my first review <laughs> for Shibari Academy is uh, no, too fucking expensive. Too fucking expensive. Uh, there's, uh, I, I don't see, especially just starting out in rope bondage, why you would commit $800 to an entire course without taking some of the free or $10 fucking education out there with possibly, probably better educators to see if that's even something you want to invest that kind of money in. Um, so yes, $800 is ridiculous. Um, you do get access to all of the content for like lifetime. So I mean, that is, that is good. Um, but I really believe your money could be, be spent uh, better elsewhere. Um, especially if you're going to drop $800, to be honest, you could get a private, like, like probably like a possibly four to eight hour private with a rope with a national rope educator for eight hundred dollars so i just wouldn't I, I just don't think that's a good value um for that price um as well as so <laughs> they are selling shibari certificates which i didn't know was a thing that you could get like a shibari certificate 
Um, also, that is the last thing that the rope community actually needs is a bunch of brand new rope people that haven't been part of the community running around being like, but I have a certificate. I'm a certified Shabari person. Like, <laughs> like no, like we, we just really like, I don't even want to have to deal with that conversation. Like, I don't want to be teaching a class and have someone be like, well, this isn't what I learned from my Shabari certificate. And then I have to laugh at them. Like, to me, a, a, a shabari certificate is similar to what we would do in the service industry when people told us that they had a bartending certificate or they went to bartending school. And we'd be like, oh, great. <laughs> because most bartenders didn't go to fucking bartending school and people who feel like they have to go to bartending school to learn bartending, it's just been a kind of a constant joke within the um, within the industry that it's like, oh, okay. Um, and that's kind of how I feel about a certificate. Like, what? Like, is that certificate, can, can, like, can I use that in my negotiations? Like, with my bottoms, can I be like, look, I'm certified. And also, my other problem is, you're getting a certificate. From what I can tell, I don't think they actually give a deep uh, bio on who is actually teaching this or who's actually come up with this curriculum. Um, I don't think it's the person that is in the videos. She seems to be reading a script. Uh, if you want to sell rope bondage, put a hot girl in it. Like, come on now. Um, but it doesn't. I it doesn't seem to me like the person who is reading the content. And again, I've only been able to watch the free introductory thing because you. It's not like you can pay for it monthly, or you can like pay for like one month and then cancel. Like you are committed to spending that eight hundred dollars, even if you do a monthly payment. So I wasn't, uh, I wasn't investing just for, just for a YouTube video. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem to me like the person who is presenting the content in the videos actually created the curriculum. It seems to me like they're reading a script. Again, not judging, probably do need to make scripts when you are making content like that, but I still want to be learning from the person that really understands the material, you know? Um, so the certificates is bullshit. Um, again, this is not just a shit on this website. This is like a warning. Like, don't get scammed. Don't get scammed. Um, on top of the fact that, yeah, so like the person, um, the model who's given the information sounds like she's reading the script. I don't know if she's actually the rigor that's going to be teaching everything. On top of the fact that we have to talk about appropriation. And if white folks, I don't care if they're fucking in Europe, because it sounds like the person that's creating this is probably also from some European country. They seem to have an accent. I know Shabari's study is made by Gargone, who is out of Paris. And i am be perfectly honest, Gargone uh, created Shabari's study partly because Shabari's study was going before COVID happened, partly because she couldn't travel anymore. Her visas got revoked because she overstayed a lot of visas in like three different countries. So she couldn't come to the U.S. anymore. And I don't think she could travel to Canada either. Um, and so she created Shibari Study because that's where she was making her money. And uh, when we talk about appropriation in the black community, we also have to talk about appropriation when it comes to Shibari and rope bondage. I have two videos on that um, on my videos uh, on my channel. So if you want to check those out, just uh, do a little search in my channel. But uh, the, like, the true epicenter, like, the true core meaning of appropriation is financially profiting from a culture that is not yours, right? That from something that is not yours. And although Shibari Study does have a couple, ja has at least one Japanese rigor on there, all of the rigors you are learning from are white or white, or white passing. Um, and it's, it seems to be the same for this site. Uh, so we do have to acknowledge that, like, if you're paying eight, charging eight hundred dollars for someone to 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 sell someone Shibari cor courses of information that you absolutely didn't learn from another Shibari fucking video, you absolutely learned in person or um, from other Japanese fucking riggers, but you're not acknowledging where the fuck that came from. You're not acknowledging the history. You're not giving names of who you learned from. That is fucking appropriation, especially at 800 motherfucking dollars for a certificate. Like, 
Um, one of the other comments I made is like, to me, the entire website reads like a cheap sales and marketing tricks 101. Like there's specials going on, you know, the, re the way that there is not like a cancel, like you can't just get one month and cancel. Um, the, just the way the copy is written on the website, it just, it just sounds like cheap sales tricks like cheap sales tricks. And so that makes me question like how, how good is this content that they're putting out? Um, because the only content you can view is the beginner content and the beginner single column content kind of stuff. Um, you know, you can fake that till you make it a little bit when we get into the suspension and like chest harnesses, that's when I can tell of like, I can see more of what's been, what's going on with the instructions. Um, Also, you should not be doing one true way and paying $800 to learn all of your rope from one rope educator. Um, meaning, like, I would totally pay $800 for a private with a rope educator for that weekend, but that's not the only person I've learned from, right? And if people think they're going to go through this course and learn this one true way of what this person does, and that's going to really enlighten their rope game, uh, it's gonna, you're going to be sadly disappointed. You need to diversify who you are learning from when it comes to rope. Um, and that's why I'm saying your dollars could probably be spent in a more efficient, smarter way for $800 where you could probably learn from fucking 12 different people, um, especially with Zoom right now, right? Then one. Yeah. Um, and if you're interested in getting one-on-one -on -one rope education, I mean, I've been talking to other educators uh, via Zoom, via recording videos and giving feedback, about 80 to 90% of rope you can learn in these virtual settings. Um, there are a few things that I can't like, I can't physically touch you, right? But that only means I have to up my communication game to be able to communicate without having to touch your rope or your bottom right through the screen um, to give you feedback. And so that's just made us better educators. Um, so I would highly recommend if you want to get more intense into your rope journey to do some one-on-one -on -one education with some of, uh, some of the rope educators out there that you like, uh, you know, I guess I don't have to do a shameless plug on my own site, but that's something I offer <laughs> is one-on-one -on -one rope co coaching sessions at a, trust me, one of the most reasonable prices you're going to find in the fucking community. So you can go to my website at the MP experience and check out my services and um, book one-on-one -on -one classes. And those aren't just for like intermediate and advanced riggers. Like those classes are for if you're brand new and we need to learn a single column, like we can start out right there. Now there are videos out there for single columns, but that's not always the best medium for people to learn. Plus there's a big aspect of getting into rope and not, um, and, and getting that validation that what you've been practicing is working. Like you're going down the right track. Um, that is, that is a, I feel like it's really, uh, unnecessary. Um, and sometimes you can't do that if you haven't um, if you don't, if you're not into, if you're not in the community, if you're not, if you haven't been able to go to other events, if you don't know anyone that can actually give you that critique back. So it's a really valuable part of your rope journey. One of the other things that I think is a little problematic with Shibari Academy is the, uh, the lack of consent and negotiations, uh, and vetting content. Um, I cannot emphasize enough if, if people are getting into rope, like you need to be going to negotiations, vetting and communication classes because we can't do any of the things that we're doing without those steps. They're more fundamental than you knowing what a fucking munter hitch is, right? So to have a site going so uh, deep into all of this type of play and intense type of suspensions and not diving deep into negotiations and consent um, yeah, I just struggle with that. I wouldn't ethically recommend that within our community. Shibari study has some videos on those topics. They at least kind of, and this, um, so like they could do more, um, but it's a little bit better than Shibari Academy, which is the one I am talking about. Um, I watched some of their introduction videos and I'm like, there's no way in a two minute video, in a two minute video, you can communicate 
the type of negotiations that need to be going on to be doing this play. So that's my review on Shibari Academy. Uh, final consensus, I do not recommend. Uh, so don't get duped. Uh, don't spend $800. Uh, and don't let your friends do it either. <laughs> so now you know. Get the word out. Um, sorry, let me get back with the chat. I wanted to get that out uh, real quick. Ba uh, Billy's big uh, top said, been on YouTube for a year, and this is the best live stream I've been to. Thanks, host. Oh, thank you. Um, let's see. Yikes, that's scary. Crap, yo, girl. Exactly. That's why. Um, oh, 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 sorry. I'm behind. Oh, Aaron Watts said, I almost forgot there were more segments. Yeah, yep, yeah, we do, and we're doing this. This is a marathon show. Get all the topics out, because... Um, I changed my format a little bit because throughout the weeks, there are so many conversations I have and topics that come up that I want to talk about on the channel, but I didn't always have time to sit down and like do a recorded edited video. So I'm like, you know what? We will just hanker down <laughs> for one night a week and just bust through a bunch of topics each week. And then we can break them up into ind individual videos later as well. So, um, all right. Singer, a cool transition. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm so love that you guys appreciate the transition. I can't tell you how much work that was. Um, yeah, Will Will to bounce said certification is such BS. Yes. Uh Billy's big top eight hundred dollars. That's rent the car payment. <laughs> yeah, if that's rent a car payment, I want to know where you live, but I can definitely rent or a car payment. <laughs> um, Goddess Rising, hello, how are you? Beautiful. Dema said, uh, yep, here comes capitalism, $800 and a certificate. And funny thing is people will flock to them and their certificate over people who have been doing this for years. Yeah, that's one reason why I'm trying to get um, uh, get ahead on some of this information out there is because people will flock to it. And I don't want to have to have the fight with some privileged cis white male about how his certificate can't tell me how to do my box ties. Like, I don't want to be in that conversation. Like, I don't want to have to have that conversation. I don't want to come back in the King community and have a bunch of, you know, fake riggers running around with certificates, having horrible consent violations. Because guess who has to do that traumatic work to, like, build those people back up? Us. We do. In the community. They don't end up having to do that work. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So spread the motherfucking word. Because I know, I, I know, again, going back to that capitalism uh, like Dema said, like we mentioned before, uh, earlier talking about in the show, we have been so programmed that people will look at that and think that it is more valid than learning from me. They will. They will think that it is more valid because it's expensive, because it's certificate, because it's a white girl that has a slight, you you know, European accent, uh, um, and, and I'm, I'm me. And they'll be like, oh, how would that black woman know about a Japanese art? Well, how does that white woman? Like, come on now. It's really sad, but that is so fucking true. Um, I did, so I don't want to just, uh, just again, rant on them and say, no, 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 uh, and not give you other options. So if you are trying to look for rope, uh, rope classes, the Karata House, um, I'll put some of these names in the chat, and if you're watching the replay, then I'm sure there are links in the description. I try to keep links up, but the Karata House is amazing. They actually just, uh, they are doing a, um, queer centered rope event with all like queer non-binary and trans educators in february um it's virtual they're based out of uh germany the owner one of the owners is karita who is an amazing um fem presenting rigor and dom who teaches there i would definitely check out the karate house their website and i can i will thoroughly say i recommend almost any of the classes that they have there Vox Studios is another group um, that hosts a uh, weekly um, rope on, or sorry, weekly kink education. Um, Anatomy Studios is another one that does kink education, has really great, great uh, educators, and they have stuff weekly, like multiple classes weekly. Kink.com, um, their classes are going to be a little bit more focused around sex work and, and, um, sexy uh adult content and uh, not as much solely focused on kink but they have a variety of classes 
I, I, I think that they have um, good resources as well. The Pan Euros Foundation um, has been hosting classes. So put that in there. Um, the Bank Collective, which is my group. You can go to their, uh, go to our website. We've got a bunch of classes coming up. We just taught a class. I just did a class last week on chest harness variations and going through the pros and cons of different shapes of chest harnesses. I think I went through about four or five. Um, not the entire class, but you guys, but the YouTube channel is going to get a couple snippets of that class. But if you want the entire class, you either have to go, um, to, uh, the bank collective Patreon page, um, or subscribe to the membership program, because I do put the classes that I teach, um, up in the membership program monthly. Um, and then also check out the kink hub. The Kink Hub is a good place, uh, to, uh, mainly on Instagram, but they also have a website. Um, and they're just reposting a lot of kink events that are being ran because a lot of individual educators are also hosting their own um, education. So I don't want to go on a rant about uh, of, of, about a company that I you know that I don't think is up and up without giving you guys some other options. So uh, you can come to me. Um, I have one on one rope bondage classes. I also do group classes. So if you like trying to split it between you know five or six of you, totally cool. Um, I also, again, uh, the Bank Collective hosts Rope Education every Sunday. Um, I host a podcast every Sunday uh, with the Bank Collective called The After Show. Like, there is a shit ton of education out here, and there's a shit ton of education available for free before you spend 800 fucking dollars. So, there you go. Next topic. I know some of these, the more segments... Segment. So, this is going to be my rant for today. We're going to stay on the rope topic. Um, oh, let me check the chat. Will to bound said, "Oh, you can be be uh, you can be an affiliate and get a cut of subscribers. It's a pyramid scheme as well. What the fuck? Yeah, I actually left that out of my notes, so I'm glad you noticed that and brought it up <laughs> because I noticed the exact same thing, and I didn't necessarily want to. I didn't want to necessarily want to go to the point where saying it's a scam, but it sounds kind of like a scam." <laughs> So, uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Will to Bound, uh, because, yeah, becoming an affiliate or advertising like that, you should be reaching out to people who do rope or, um, or that have taught a class on your program and asking them to be affiliates, not just advertising for affiliates. Yeah, that sounds, yeah, yeah. So, glad that you noticed that. <laughs> so I could bring it up and talk about it. Um... Oh, Billy's a big talk. We're talking about rope bondage. Um, shibari is a type of Japanese rope bondage. Um, it's an art. Uh, you can Google shibari, or again, you can go to uh, the Bank Collective website and uh, and check out some stuff on there. If you want to see some free rope content of like what a rope bondage scene looks like. Uh, I did a fun fundraiser with all of my bottoms about uh, a couple weeks ago, and it's over four hours of rope bondage performances. They are all available on my nonprofit site. There, I'm putting the link in the chat. Obviously, there's some spaces because YouTube doesn't like us to be able to share, share links. But put that all together. If you go to that page, there are five rope performances on there that are free and available to watch. I think each, each of them are over 30 minutes. Um, so if you're just wanting to like be like, what is this thing? Um, or again, I think my last video upload is a trailer of like all those performances. So you can check that out too if you don't know what rope is. Just the... Just to help the folks that maybe are like, what are they talking about? Um, and thanks for asking that, um, uh, Billy's Big Top. Because I do talk about, uh, obviously I talk about politics, talk about social justice issues, but this is a kink channel. Um, but I'm also interested in all the rest of these things, and they overlap. Um, so. 
Karate House put out uh, amazing general kink content. I just wish I could afford most of them. Yeah, I will admit Karate House was a little bit more on the pricey side. I can't afford to go to as many classes as I would like to from them. Um, but you do get access to the replay, which is really nice. Um, they also have another thing, and you can hear more about this. I actually did a video on this because I was a... Uh, um, an influ like an influencer to help with the launch, but they have another thing called Oh Yes Please. Um, and it is more general kink content. Um, check Instagram for this because I'm not I'm not exactly sure what the website is, or you can Google it. But um, they also have um just general rope uh education uh available like on demand, um, and not just like uh booked classes. Uh, Will to said, those videos and performances are really good, uh, are, are really good having watched them. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, Dima, those performances were fire, by the way. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was really, I was really excited with how that turned out. Uh, I had all my bottoms kind of get together and they all came up with their own playlist and we didn't choreograph anything. We just did the thing in the moment and it turned out even better than I could have imagined. Okay, so let's get into rants for real now, even though uh, I know I'm always going to joke about how, like, this whole show is a giant rant, but let's specifically rant. Let's get my, let's get my rant, get my weed ready, my little fro ready for my rant. We're going to go ham, okay? What are we talking about tonight? I'm, I'm warning you ahead of time. My inner diva may come, come out during the rants, okay? That's when I get to be, I might be a little shady. Beach bind. Beach Bind is a rope convention based out of Jamaica. It is, uh, it's a little uh, pretentious of an event. Um, the rope educators, the <laughs> crafty young girl said I have my popcorn <laughs> Um. They get some of the top uh, riggers in the world to this event, I will admit. You're going to have people there from Japan. You're going to have people there from um, from England. You're going to have people there from Africa. Like, you're going to have, well, let me take that last one back. I'm not sure if I've actually seen anyone on my lineup from Africa. But you're definitely going to get some of the Japanese riggers, which sometimes are hard to get in the States and can be very, very expensive, Okay. Um, the event itself is also very, very expensive. Um, it, you have to pay for your own flights. Uh, you're staying at a hedonist, uh, club in Jamaica, which is like, uh, all nude adult kind of swingers club that also does kink stuff. All inclusive. So for two people to go, I'm going to be honest, it's about four grand minimum, minimum to go for like five days. Uh, now you do get to do rope on the beach in Jamaica. You know, you do it to have, you know, endless drinks, obviously not while you're tying, uh, but there are, um, there are a lot of like draw, right? There's a lot of draw to it, right? Um, and you know, how often do we have kink events where we literally can like tie from the beach or like tie on the beach or, or just, you know, never have to take a car anywhere and just like walk back to our, our hotel, or, or even, again, a space that is, you know, um, a resort that is made for kinky BDSM swinger fucking folks, right? Like, that sounds amazing. Hmm. <laughs> well, it's about that pretentious is a word, because <laughs> I called it pretentious. Okay. Woo, okay, here we go. Um, so you have to understand, sometimes talking about this is a little stressful, because whereas... Like, in the youtube sphere, it's going out into this big group of people, but, like, in the rope community, it is very small and intimate, and some of the things I'm talking about, like, I have, I have these riggers' cell phone numbers, and we know each other, um, but anyways, Beach Vine is the only rope convention in 2020 that still happened in person. The only rope convention that did not have the efficacy the moral 
to not actually have this event in 2020. And they thought that it is responsible and risk aware to have at the height of the pandemic in America, have all these privileged white, yeah, I'm gonna emphasize privileged white people who can actually afford to go to this, bring their COVID onto a plane to a brown country so that they can practice their privileged hobby. Let's be honest, it is a privilege, their privileged hobby, why brown people serve them. They did this while they still have like an eight paragraph Black Lives Matter statement on their website. Maybe they only care about American Black Lives. I don't know. But the fact that this event actually happened, the fact that I, like, again, I had seen people kind of talk about it and um, that, like, people were like, what the fuck, can't believe this is happening? Which, to me, thought, like, oh, I, I, they'll probably be smart enough to not let it happen. And then, like, literally last week, I see pictures of riggers I know in Jamaica, Beach Vine 2020. This is its own separate problem that has nothing to do with a long history of problematic behavior from this convention. Not to, like, we're just, brief, like, we're just touching the surface when it comes to the representation in the, at, this, at this convention. But if you want to go to the website, just go to Beachbind, you know, Shibari, whatever, Google it. You will find the website. Look through the website and see how many brown people are represented in the uh, in the marketing material, given that it's in a brown country. Last time I checked with the Jamaicans, just go look and see how many. There's one on the first page. I'll tell you that right now. One. Um, <laughs> there's one. Um, and I just I just have an absolute fucking problem with this. Um, it was a problem before COVID, but the fact that that was the decision you guys decided to make just uh, just renders your Black Lives Matter statement fucking mute. Not to mention all of the other problematic behavior, behavior that you guys have been practiced in before this. So I think it's fucked up that a very privileged, very white uh, um, group of people in space have uh, created an event where they go to a brown country and then they Okay, other very privileged uh, white people, white passing people, or ideal minorities to also come to this brown country and practice their thing, but not actually interconnect with any of the brown people. I don't understand. I do not, like, I don't understand. I don't understand. Points if you know where this is from. Um, like, I don't understand. Like, I don't get it. What? And then you think that like I'm going to pay money to go to any fucking convention that those educators that went to that convention are teaching at or that anyone I saw go to Beach Vine, like I'm going to financially support anything you're fucking doing? No. Nope. Nope, nope. All right, so let's get into some of the other problematic things, right? Um... So this event, I had actually tried to go to. I would, I, at the beginning of last year, I was going to try to go to it because I was looking at the educator lineup and I didn't know as much information as I knew now. And uh, the only way I was going to be able to go is if I applied for a grant. I was excited because out of all the conventions, they were the one convention that had like $10,000 worth of grant money available. And they asked you to apply based on the minimum amount of grant money you would need to come so that they could split it between multiple people. Because about, to, I think it's like $9,000. That really, to be honest, would cover like two people's trips. Three, like, sorry, two couples. Um, so I know I applied for that. I know at least five other black riggers in the community that also applied for that grant. Uh, given there's not very many of us, right, in the first place, 
I don't know who the fuck got that grant, but it wasn't a person of color that I'm aware. Um, and then literally I, I was, I slightly was talking about this on a live stream back in June. And one of my good friends texted me during the live stream because I kind of brought it up about this uh, this grant money. And he straight up said, because he knows the people who organized this event, again, I have not even gotten into the problematic behavior from the guy who actually created this event, who there is a reason why the event is in Jamaica because he can't actually host any legal events in the States. Um, but um, so I get a message from my friend that says, yeah, that grant is only there so that the owner of the event can pick hot chicks that he wants to tie to get the grant to come. So basically, the grant is to pay for his sugar babies to come on the trip. It's not for black people. It's not to give people more opportunity. It's a way that he doesn't have to come out of his own pocket and he can make people who are giving fucking money that they think are going to help people to rope bottoms that like he wants to tie. Uh, I bet you they're not melanated ones. Just say. So besides the racism, the person who started the event can send violations out the Wahoo. Surprised? Are we surprised? We're not. We're not surprised at all. Can send violations out the Wahoo. Um, it's like one of the worst kept secrets in like uh the uh, like the Chicago area of the country and those communities of like everybody knows this but nothing's being done about it because the guy is loaded and he is definitely sue happy. I I love one of my favorite traumatic stories when I get to hear about a victim within the kink community who can't actually out their abuser because their abuser is a rich wealthy white man who will literally sue them for like defamation i know when i was doing my outings uh about bed back in june i got at least four stories out of la specifically of people who have horrible consent violations like really horrendous stuff like stuff they could go to the police for not like miscommunication that needed to be like you know like really legit shit abusive shit that they could go to the police for that they can't say shit about because the people who own the devil's mouth society um are really really wealthy and will sue the fuck out of them if they say anything because in case you want to know what silencing victims looks like it looks like really white wealthy men Um, and we need to wake up to the fact that most of the conventions that we've attended, whether they are ran by women or woke people or trans or queer people now, when that convention was started, because most King conventions are not actually profitable. I know I've been putting them together. I've been researching this for years. Are not actually profitable. So most King conventions and rope conventions were created by one white man who said, I want to have better access to bottoms. So I'm going to create an event and I don't care if it makes any money because that is not what I'm getting from it. So I will keep just putting money into it every single year, even if it doesn't profit. Bondage Expo Dallas bed hasn't made a profit in like the last two or three years. And literally the the one of the person, one of the, the owner of bed told me last year that he had jokingly told the team like, hey, you guys need to make it look like you at least made like a dollar profit this year just for taxes. So if none of them are making any money, they're not getting paid, they're not employees, why the fuck are they running the event? Do you know how much stress it is to put together a giant fucking rope convention? What is your motivation for putting that convention together if you're not getting paid and you're not making any money? Oh, I know all these rigors. Oh, this person's coming. Oh, this person's coming. Oh, and guess what? For that weekend, I'm a fucking superstar because I'm staff. Access, clap. Bragging rights. I may have I may have gone too ham on this. I don't know. I was really <laughs> like I was really upset about this beach vines shit. To be honest, I was gonna 
talk about this beach vine shit months ago in June. And I held my tongue because, to be honest, because of another black kinkster in the community that I was trying to be respectful to. Um, and then I saw this shit and I was like, fuck that. No, actually, sorry. We need to, this needs to go away because the owner has also tried to finagle this PR situation where he is trying to act like he's stepping down and like he's not in charge and like there's another femme presenting person that's kind of running everything except your name is still on the website it's still beneath the Black Lives Matter statement which was bullshit we know because guess what if you I mentioned for beach find it's a bunch of pretentious riggers right how many of those riggers do you think were black I'll wait not very many how many riggers are teaching at that level? Oh, wait, not very many. So next year, Beach Bind 2021, when you say we all about the representation and we go back through your 14 page Black Lives Matter statement, I know who should be getting calls to be, at, to be flown to Jamaica to teach Roe. And I also know how much you paid all those right, white fucking riggers that came there. So you're not going to get us to come for like, oh, we'll pay for your ticket and your flight. No, no. You're going to also pay me 1500 fucking dollars just like Ian and Ishan fucking charge. Or $3,000 just like those Japanese riggers fucking charge. So again, 2021 is going to be fun. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to the moments. Because I'm looking forward to the growth. I don't want to have negative moments, but I am, but my, I'm going to be honest, my shady diva is looking forward to the moments in 2021 where we see if these conventions live up to their Black Lives Matter statement, especially within the rope community, because, hey, guess what? The, the riggers in the rope community, we know who the fuck we are. So we're going to know whether you're actually like living up to what they're saying. Because if you haven't gotten invited to that, then I'm going to be like, hey, Miss Rima. Miss Rima, did you get invited to educate there? No? Okay. Hey, did you get invited to educate there? No? Okay. One more. Did you get invited to educate there? No? Okay. Looks like that Black Lives Matter statement was bullshit. Sorry. I think we need to just resign ourselves to the fact that it's probably going to be another year without in-person conventions for the kink community. And although it breaks my heart and is also sad, and I feel like there are some smaller group ways that we will be able to get away with connecting, we cannot preach ethical, risk-aware kink and then expect people to pay to be put in a convention center with the same circulating fucking air in and out, no ventilation system, not weeks after a pandemic, supposedly, which is not even over, by the way. By the way, we had highest fucking, I think, death count or new cases yesterday. So like, we're at the height of this thing right now, which doesn't make any sense why, like literally at the height, you are traveling to fucking Jamaica, but like, we have to be realistic about what 2021 is going to look like. And I think we got really excited. And I think we were really sad and like, oh, this shitty thing is just a 2020 thing. And it's not. It's like a real life thing that doesn't care about uh, fucking made up timetables. Like, let's be honest. Dates, years, time. That was a, a, a social construct that humans made up to like make sense and be organized. But like. The universe don't give a fuck about it's a it's a December 20th or 2020 or 2021. It don't. Shit's going to happen like it's going to happen. So um yeah, Jennifer, I'm going to start going through the comments now. Jennifer loves Scroots and I think uh think I heard August is the earliest we can possibly conjugate even if that's not guaranteed. August is the best case scenario and we're already behind months on based of on the base case, best case scenario. So I've been watching I think We've gotten, we have over 350 million people that live in this country. We have vaccinated like two, no, no, it was like 1.2%, like not even like 1% or something like that. Um, so we're not even close. <laughs> like we're not even close. We're not even close. I think the reporter or the news station I was watching said at this rate, it would take 10 years 
to have herd immunity. Thanks, Trump. Um, and the thing is that people think that like Biden's gonna get in and like everything's going to change. No, no, if you set up a shoddy fucking distribution system and someone has to come in and fix it, that's like a CEO starting a company fucking it all up and then someone having to come and fix it. Does that, does that gonna happen on a quicker timetable? Nope, nope. So I think we should be more realistic about that. Plus we haven't even gotten into like super COVID strain that has shown up in Colorado. Um, okay, so let me start going through some of the comments. If you have any questions about any of the things I just ranted about, please let me know. Um, I'm not saying anything that I'm, I'm not joking. A huge portion of the rope community already knows. And, uh, you know, I've already kind of laid myself out on the skillet for being the truth teller within our rope community. So, you know, we might, I might as well throw another one out there. This is actually a big deal. People may are, people are going to probably really hate me for this one, to be honest. Um, Jennifer Love Screw It says, sounds like they didn't want to give back all those $4,000 tickets. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's business. And if it's if he really is a businessman that is running, um, you know, that is running this uh, organization. I don't know where to put that. Eh. Yeah. Just keeps sitting in my throat. Oh, well. Um. But you would think if he had plenty of money, he could just like write it off as a loss. <laughs> like, like you don't need to risk people's lives. But uh, yeah. So Billy, uh, Billy's big pop said scary. Miss Marita said no, no, no. Jen Jennifer Love Scrut said the fact that so many businesses continue to run things as usual for the whole panty has been so demoralizing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, disgusting Dima said, yeah, I saw a few names I know and I was disappointed, but not surprised. Yeah. Yeah. That's again, that's how I feel too. Disappointed, not surprised. Uh, Billy big, Billy's big top said that is very messed up. Dima said black lives matter has now become a marketing play. Oh, speak to that. Um, wait, seriously. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm reminded of, like, this last season of The Boys, when, um, if any of you guys watched The Boys, uh, when they were trying to do PR for Maeve, who said she's bisexual, and they just, like, had to make her a lesbian, because they're like, bisexual doesn't really, like, play off that well. Um, we really, like, you know, people really like when lesbians have, like, pretty strict, like, gender roles. So, like, maybe your girlfriend could, like, you know, just a little bit more masculine. And, like, that's kind of how I feel like some conversations are probably going in corporations, where, like, there's probably black girls coming in that have, like, don't have, that have, like, three C hair, right and they're like and they straightened it because that's how they normally wear it all the time and they've come in and like some white lady's been like wow i mean you're really really beautiful and i love it but is there any way we could like make your hair like a little bit more like ethnic like a little bit more like exotic you know what i mean like do you know what i mean you know I mean, you're really pretty though tanisha but we kind of can you we want it to look a little bit more like urban. <laughs> um, we know that is happening. Uh, let's see. Will to bound said it's worrying how much of this doesn't surprise me. Yeah, no, that was my biggest fucking thing within the rope community. The first time I had one of my convers a conversation with like some of the you know players in the rope game, and they were just telling me information about. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We all know him. He's a horrible consent violator. Oh, or like, oh yeah, you know him. He's an egotistical asshole. Well, everybody knows like the amount of times I've been in groups and people have been like, like someone's gotten outed as being like a horrible consent violator. And I've had people who know this person who know people in the community and their response is, well, it's about time. It was going to happen sooner or later. And I'm like, wait, you knew, you knew, you knew. You knew, like everything I just told you about Beach Bind, a lot of people in the community fucking know. 
everything I told you about bed, Bondage Expo Dallas, everybody fucking knows. This is not secret information unless it happened to me privately with them. But most of my information came from other people in the community who were already aware of these things. And then when they tell me, I go, how can you be aware of that and not say anything? How many bottoms have been harmed because people just haven't said anything? You don't have to out a victim to out a predator. I'm gonna repeat that. You don't have to out a victim to out a predator. But if a predator gets outed and your response is, well, it was gonna happen sooner or later, you can fuck the fuck off. <laughs> Seriously. Mm, crafty Elker, I looked at the side. I'm not seeing any female tops or male bottoms. No, no, no. You're gonna see white girls naked and rope on the beach. Billy's big top said sounds like an ego trip for them. Yep, absolutely. Miss uh, Marita said, good point, Crafty. Yeah, Will to Bound said, um, these cons shouldn't be running in 20 uh in real life in 2021 either, at least in the UK. Um, the U.S. COVID isn't going to get that under control this year. No, absolutely fucking not. Um, Jennifer Love Scrooge said, I think I heard August. Oh, yeah, we talked about that earlier. The last pandemic of 1918 lasted three years. Yeah, best case, yeah. Dema, in summer of 2020, they told us normal wasn't coming until 2022. With the way it is now, 2022 is, is optim optimistic at best. I work in the medical research field. I believe you. I believe you. Um, I don't really want to go back to normal, uh, in many aspects, but I mean, I like, again, I hankered, I've been hungering down of like, this is a temporary thing. <laughs> like, this isn't, we're going to be in this situation for a little while. So let's get comfortable. Let's get this zoom set up. Perfect. Cause we're going to be doing this for a while. You know? Um, Billy's Big Top said they did that on the voice. Wow. I had no idea what was going on in the background. Yeah. Yeah. There's. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, like, this is one reason, to be honest, why I probably didn't make as many friends as I should have in the rope community, because when some of these things came up, ignorantly, you know, not understanding the social power, econo like, economics within this community, I was just like, but that's wrong. <laughs> like, but that's wrong. And a lot of people didn't like it because they didn't want people saying out loud that that's wrong. The number one person in my community that people go to for consent for consent violations is looked at as like the mother of who to go to for consent violations is also the number one person to ignore consent violations that have been communicated to her in the community. Like, her and her group of people created a situation in which they were the only trusted resource to deal with consent violations, which created a power funnel of that. That was the only people that people went to to deal with consent violations in the Dallas community. And then guess what happened? Then she got to decide who get who gets held accountable for the consent violations. She did personally. And guess what? It wasn't her friends. It wasn't her friends that she held accountable. Remember earlier when I said, like, people suck? <laughs> Don't let the King community fool you into thinking that um, just because someone's into kink or someone's in leadership, that means that they are, you know, an ethical, moral person. You have to hold everyone accountable. I'm not always probably the most ethical, moral person. I probably, like, I'm going to have a moment. I may have a moment. And I hope that I have created systems around me and friends around me that care enough to hold me accountable for that. You know, I have, I have a pack with both, uh, with both my male partner and my other male good friend that they have 100% consent that if anywhere along my life journey of rope or YouTube or anything, my ego is getting out of control and I'm making decisions from self ego and not for the community. They're allowed to literally shove me up against the wall and be like, Hey, uh, remember where you came from?
Like, um, like, and I told them to do it exactly like that. Because if I get in that space, that's probably how you're going to need to be like, hey, 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 no, I'm really serious right now. You're getting out of control. But I'm trying to put those safeties in ahead of time so that when I get in that space, I'm not, I, I'm not, uh, overwhelmed with the pressures of having power <laughs> pretty much um or or having uh an audience um that's normally what gets in the way is ego is ego um and that's what's keeping some of these events running is that the person who's running it doesn't want to just admit that like dude you're fucking up you fucked up and nobody around them wants to hold them accountable This is why, specifically, since June, since I did my outing, I've been very upset with some of the attacks of some of the Black folks in our community when there are much worse white riggers still educating, still teaching, still producing events, and not being held accountable because they're rich enough to sue people if they say anything. And that is the fucking truth. Like, I, d I had at least five to six six stories that I did not get to share when I was uh, you know, trying to facilitate some stories that are horrendous. And the people who are part of them still host their group in LA, still run things, still get to teach at on a international fucking level and no one has held them accountable. And like I mentioned before, nobody that I've had has been held accountable. Uh, the people in my community, bed, the people who've harmed me, if you wanna go back and listen, watch my story, if you wanna hear all the dirty details, None of them have been held accountable. No one has, they've, they've not had an apology. They've not reached out to me. There's no transformative justice. I haven't heard from them. It's been nothing, nothing. Uh, again, going back to what I said earlier, I really think some people think that like they can just quiet in the background and wait for some time and then come back and like people are gonna forget or something. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's going to be the show. I think it's going to be the show. Um, who knows? I may get canceled after this one. <laughs> the rogue community might be like, that's the truth from you, black woman. Go back where you belong, where you're silent. Uh, but you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. I don't care anymore. Um, that again, that's the point that I got to when I did, uh, when I did do my outing of bondage expo Dallas is I just got to a point of like, there is nothing else you can take from me. <laughs> like there are not more, there's nothing else you can take from me. So what am I going to lose by doing this? Um, and that's kind of how I feel with some of it. Um, so yeah. Um, just, uh, so you guys know coming up on the channel, I, uh, did a little, trailer of some of my rope bondage performances and uh you know y'all like it <laughs> um and i know i talk about rope bondage a lot on this channel uh but i am going to be starting to put more educational rope bondage content on the channel so kind of little snippets from education that i'm doing at bank and stuff like that um i have been hesitant to do that a little bit because i want to keep my monetization on youtube but I also noticed like there's like three other rope channels that literally started their YouTube channel in like June when COVID started and they have like 20,000 subscribers. They were white people, but like they have a lot of subscribers and they're not talking about, uh, uh, they're, they're literally just teaching shibari patterns um, and not any suspension. And I was like, look, there's some other stuff that needs to be talked about out on these platforms. Um, so I will be putting more content out like that. My series on interracial dating, the first two episodes went out last week. You can definitely catch those. The next episodes are coming. They will be coming out uh, on Tuesdays until that entire series is out. Um, I did a special series on my podcast, the After Show, uh, Bank After Show podcast. You can go to the Bank Collective and listen to it. You can listen to it on Spotify, Stitcher, I, Apple um, Podcasts, all of those podcast places. There is a special mini series on there that we just released called Unkink the Margin, The Voices of the Unheard. And it is a specific four part uh, podcast on black and bi I'm sorry, on BIPOC folks experience within the kink community. Uh, we also had Sage, um, call me Sage on Instagram.
come in as a professional diversity coach and really share some knowledge and experiences. I highly recommend those podcasts. Plus, I spend a decent amount of time editing and putting them together. So, like, check it out. <laughs> there, I don't think there's any other podcast with BIPOC folk that is talking about rope out there. So, uh, we also bring in a lot of guests to do interviews. We had Miss Remo, who is a black, queer, femme presenting rigor and dominant out of Atlanta with her partner and did like a 45 minute interview. Um, another, actually another black teamster, Sir Phoenix Black out of Atlanta did an interview with. So definitely check out that podcast. Um, help us, help us grow the podcast, help us grow the pod. Um, <clears throat> next Wednesday, there will be a special live stream interview, um, Wednesday night at 8 PM. You, I think actually the, it might already be up where you can set the reminder, but another YouTube channel called bondage tuition. We're going to do a collab. So um, he is out of England. We're going to be doing an interview talking about rope. Definitely check that out. Uh, then obviously we'll have our show next Thursday. And then the 19th, which is a Tuesday, we'll be doing a special episode with my play partner, Ari Sinclair, on mental health and uh, BDSM and kink uh, at 8 p.m. Our normal streaming, uh, normal streaming time on Tuesday, uh, the 19th. So definitely check that out. Tons of more content coming out on this channel. I also am getting ready to edit together an interview I did with um, Master Malik, who is a Pakistani uh, master and dominant, uh, respected, covered leatherman out of Oklahoma. I did an interview with him about Black people within the King community over a year ago, before any of this shit happened, because it was part of a documentary I was creating on Black King. Obviously, lots of things have happened to there. Still want to do that documentary, but I uh, hadn't been able to get uh, other the rest of the interviews together. And so I'm going to release that interview out in some series, uh, um, in a couple series as well, because I think it's really valuable and talks about some of the things we've been talking about in this last time. Plus, Master Malik is just an amazing, beautiful human being. So I want to share that content. So I've realized that I actually have a lot of backed up content of stuff that I filmed and recorded and I just haven't shared or edited yet. So I'm excited to be able to get a lot of that content out and doing these weekly live shows like this helps me still be able to talk about all these fun hot topics. I'm so appreciative for everyone who stayed with the show tonight, everyone in the chat um, and all your comments and just feedback. I just, I really, I'm enjoying, and enjoy the space, enjoy making content, enjoy making my little transitions and you guys liking them. Ooh, it makes me so happy as my INTJ self. Um, so I really appreciate everyone's interaction and uh, yeah, stay tuned for more. We will be talking about uh, more topics next week as well, having interviews, self-care, take care of yourself. And um, if you're going to revolt, make sure to wear a motherfucking mask. Okay. All black, head to toe goggles no uh no uh very serious identifiers so don't wear anything that has logos on it okay just when you revolt let's do it anonymously okay okay that's my last tips for the night <laughs> have a great night everyone much love mwah, 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 mwah. i will see you guys next week happy kinking and check me out on clubhouse if you want to chat okay